Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about sonography of cosmetic procedures. This is the first video in this video series with title of Facial Ultrasound Anatomy Part 1. The outline of this presentation include introduction, main anatomical layers of the face, including superficial fat pads of the face, the superficial musculoepineurotic system, famous as SMAS, retaining ligaments, muscles of the face, deep fat compartments, anatomy of the eyelids and periorbital region, and main vessels of the face. At first, introduction. Several anatomical structures of the face may be critical for performing cosmetic or plastic surgery procedures. For example, the injection of butylinum toxin type A in the wrong place may produce an unwanted effect such as an eyelid ptosis. Another example of an adverse reaction may follow the unintended intravascular injection of fillers in the glabellar or nasofold regions which can cause skin necrosis and blindness. Fortunately, in spite of the large and rising numbers of cosmetic procedures that are performed worldwide, reports of very severe adverse reactions seem to be infrequent and most adverse reactions are transitory and manageable. However, knowledge of the precise anatomical characteristics and location of these structures may support the prevention and or early detection of this troublesome and sometimes devastating side effects. Sonography can show the location and thickness of muscles, arteries, veins, and glands, including the presence of anatomical variants. It provides non-invasive imaging of the eyelids, nose, and lips and can detect the presence and location of exogenous material such as fillers. In this video, we will have a quick overview of the general face anatomy and in the next video, we will review the ultrasound images related to these anatomical areas. Main anatomical layers of the face. The face is composed of several layers such as skin with epidermis, dermis and hypodermis, also called subcutaneous tissue, including superficial fat pads. Superficial muscular aponeuritic system, famous as SMAS, defined as a network of connective tissue with fibrous and elastic components, which is located between the skin and muscles. Another layer is muscles and bones with preosteum and deep fascia. Between these layers, there are deep fat components, arteries and veins, nerves, glands and cartilages. The superficial fat pads of the face. These compartments are separated from one another by delicate facial tissue and septi that converge where adjacent compartments meet to form retaining ligaments. The Superficial fat compartments of the face comprise the following the nasolabial fat compartments, the medial, medial, and lateral temporal cheek or molar fat pads, the central and middle forehead fat pads, and lateral forehead fat pads, which is actually the upper extension of the lateral temporal cheek fat pad, the superior, inferior, and lateral orbital fat pads. The compartmentalized anatomy of the superficial cutaneous fat of the face has implication in the aging process. Volume loss appears to occur at different rates in different compartments, leading to irregularities in the facial contour and loss of the seamless, smooth transitions between the convexities and concavities of the face associated with youthfulness and beauty the superficial musculoepineuritic system. This system or a network of collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and fat cells connects the mimetic muscles to the overlying dermis and plays an important functional role in facial expression. 
In simple terms, the S-mask can be considered as a sheet of tissue that extends from the neck or platysma into the face, famous as S-mask proper. Also, in the temporal area, famous as superficial temporal fascia, and medially beyond the temporal crest into the forehead, which famous as Gallia eponeuretica, retaining ligaments. We have two groups of retaining ligaments, include true and false. True retaining ligaments are easily identifiable structures that connect the dermis to the underlying preosteum. False retaining ligaments are more diffuse condensations of fibrous tissue that connect superficial and deep facial fasciae. The zygomatic ligament or MacGregor patch is a true ligament that connects the inferior border of the zygomatic arc to the dermis and is found just posterior to the origin of the zygomaticus minor muscle. Other true ligaments include the lateral orbital thickening on the supralateral orbital rim that arises as a thickening of the orbicularis retaining ligament and the mandibular retaining ligament. The mandibular retaining ligament connects the preosteum of the mandible just medial to the origin of the depressor angularis to the overlying dermis. This attachment gives rise to the labiomandibular fold just anterior to the jowl. The masseteric ligaments are false retaining ligaments that arise from the anterior border of the masseter and insert into the S mass and overlying dermis of the cheek. With aging, these ligaments attenuate the S mass over the masseter, becomes pathetic, and this leads to the formation of the jowls. Below the lobule of the air, the platysma auricular ligament represents a condensation of fibrous tissue where the lateral temporal cheek fat compartment meets the posterior auricular fat compartment. Muscles of the face Most cosmetic procedures deal with the so-called facial expression muscles or mimetic muscles. The muscles of facial expression are thin, flat muscles that act either as sphincters of facial orifices, as dilators, or as elevators and depressors of the eyebrows and mouth. Of course, memorizing the names of all these muscles is not necessary, but general familiarity with them can be helpful in ultrasound examinations. We can divide the facial expression muscles into four groups. The first group is the periorbital facial muscles include frontalis muscle, corrugator supersli, depressor supersli, procerus muscle, and orbicularis oculi. Another group is the perioral muscles include the levator muscles, zygomaticus major and minor, resorius muscle, which is visible on sagittal view, orbicularis oris, depressor anguli oris, depressor labi, and mentalis. The third group is nasal group muscles, include compressor naris, dilator naris, and depressor septi. The platysma muscle lies superficially and extends into the lower face. Interestingly, some of these muscles, such as zygomaticus or risorius, are very thin and may show prominent fibrous parts. Other muscles, such as orbicularis oculi, present loose insertions into the fibrofatty hypodermal tissue or they can end in a common muscular site. These muscles support the expression of emotion by playing agonist-antagonist rules and are mostly inverted by branches of facial nerve. Cosmetic procedures such as butylinum toxin injections are intended to decrease the strength of the muscles that generate unwanted lines or wrinkles by a powerful contraction. Deep fat compartments. The superficial fat compartments described above lie above the muscles of the facial expression in the subcutaneous plane. 
In the mid phase, the subauricularis oculi fat, famous as SUV, and deep cheek fat, which has medial and lateral part, represent deeper fat compartments that provide volume and shape to the face and act as gliding planes within which the muscles of facial expression can move freely. Between the SUF and the zygomatic process of maxilla, there is a gliding space famous as the perizygomatic space. The buccal fat pad is an aesthetically important structure that sits on the posterior lateral part of the maxilla, superficial to the buccinator muscle and deep to the anterior part of the masseter. Functionally, it facilitates a free gliding movement to the surrounding muscles of mastication. The buccal fat pad has the medial and lateral extensions. The sublevator fat pad is a medial extension of the buccal fat pad behind the levator labi superioris and is continuous below and laterally with the melolabial and buccal extensions of buccal fat pad. The lateral extension of buccal fat pad, famous as petrigoid extension, buccal branches of the facial nerve and parotid duct travel along its surface within the parotidomasetric fascia after leaving the parotid gland. The retroorbicularis oculi fat, famous as roof, is part of the gallia fat pad over the supralateral orbital rim from the middle of the rim to beyond the lateral part. The roof lies deep to orbicularis oculi muscle and contributes to the fullness in youth and heaviness in senescence of the lateral brow and lid. The gallia fat pad lies deep to frontalis in the forehead and extends superiorly for about 3 cm. Anatomy of the eyelids and periorbital region. Several cosmetic and plastic surgery procedures are performed around the eyelids and periorbital regions, so knowledge of the regional anatomy is of paramount importance for cosmetic surgeons, but radiologists need to have a general knowledge of the anatomy of this area. We have orbital fat pads and related structures in periorbital region, this is the lateral and here is medial side. We can see here periapionorotic fat pad, nasal fat pad in medial side, central fat pad below and temporal fat pad here. We can see in this schematic view the lateral view of the upper eyelid. We can see here skin, orbicularis oculi muscles and many other structures here. In lateral view of lower eyelid, we have an important fat pad famous as suborbicularis oculi fat or SUF, which we will see in the next videos from this playlist. It's important in ultrasound examination. Main vessels of the face. The location of some vessels produces danger regions in cosmetic and plastic surgery procedures. Therefore, getting to know them is necessary to perform any cosmetic procedure. The skin and soft tissue of the face receive their atrial supply from branches of the facial, maxillary, and superficial temporal arteries, which all of them are the branches of external carotid artery. The exception is a mask-like area, including the central forehead, eyelids, an upper part of the nose which are supplied through the internal carotid system by the ophthalmic arteries. The facial artery arises from the external carotid artery and loops around the inferior and anterior borders of the mandible just anterior to the masseter. It pierces the masseteric fascia and ascends upward and medially toward the eye. At the level of the mouth, the facial artery sends two labial arteries famous as inferior labial artery and superior labial artery into the lips where they pass below the orbicularis oris muscle. The continuation of the facial artery near the medial canthus beside the nose is the angular artery. The maxillary artery is a terminal branch of the external carotid with three main branches including mental, buccal and infraorbital arteries. 
The mental artery is the terminal branch of the inferior alveolar artery that passes through the mental foramen to supply the chin and inferior lip. The buccal artery crosses the buccinators to supply the cheek tissue. The infraorbital artery reaches the face through the infraorbital foramen and supplies the lower eyelid, cheek, and lateral nose. It anastomoses with branches of the transverse facial, ophthalmic, buccal, and facial arteries. The superficial temporal artery is the terminal branch of the external carotid artery. The lowest branch of the superficial temporal artery is transverse facial artery, which supplies the parotid gland, parotid duct, masseter, and skin of the lateral concept. Another branch is medial temporal artery that pierces the deep temporal fascia and supplies the temporalis muscle. Thereafter, about 2 cm above the zygomatic arc, the superficial temporal artery divides into anterior and posterior branches. Anterior branch toward the frontal area and posterior branch toward to parietal area. The ophthalmic artery is a branch of internal carotid system. Its branches include the lacrimal, supraorbital, supratrochlear, infratrochlear, and external nasal arteries. There is significant communication between the external and internal carotid artery systems around the eye through several anastomoses. Another one, we must emphasize that in adherent intraatrial injection of fillers for soft tissue augmentation around the eye can lead to occlusion of the central retinal vessels and potentially blindness. Of course, there are many normal variations in facial vessels. As you can see, the anatomical variants of facial artery in this image. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.